Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy, delicious skillet cookie. So let's get started. To make this recipe, you only need a few ingredients. All-purpose flour, brown sugar, granulated sugar, salt, butter, vanilla, one egg, some baking soda, and of course, chocolate chips. So these are called skillet cookies because we cook them in a skillet, but if you don't have a cast iron one at home, that's totally fine. Any close to 10 inch skillet will work, and if you don't have one of those, you could use a cake pan as well. Even like a rectangular or square baking pan will work in this. Super versatile and so easy. First off, we're setting our oven to 350. This recipe comes together right away and there is no chill time. You're also gonna wanna grab a 10 inch skillet. I'm gonna give this some baking spray, just a couple hits. Grab a big bowl, pop a scale underneath. It's the easiest way to measure your ingredients. All right. Now we're gonna add two cups of all-purpose flour. That's 240 grams. Cookies are delicious, but let's be honest, they're a little bit finicky. Like you're sometimes worried like, oh, did I chill it too long? Is it chilled not enough? Is this gonna be spreading out? Like, ah. Uh. It doesn't have to be hard, but I understand the frustration. However, with a skillet cookie, it just bakes in a skillet. And it's supposed to be kind of gooey and molten in the middle almost like a brownie or a blondie. So it's just like the perfect thing to enjoy by the spoonful, beyond easy. And if you top it with ice cream, you're gonna be in heaven. Half a teaspoon of salt, it's gonna give us some contrast. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. This is gonna be the leavening agent. Grab a whisk and we're just gonna whisk this up. A lot of times I'll sift the ingredients out, but this cookie is so foolproof and easy, you don't need to. We're gonna set that aside, and now you could use another bowl and a hand mixer or a stand mixer with a paddle attachment. I'm gonna add 10 tablespoons of unsalted room temperature butter. By the way, room temperature means that it's not gooey and falling apart like a puddle. You can press in and apply a little bit of pressure and it leaves a dent. You shouldn't be like <laughs> trying to get your finger in there, and you definitely wouldn't hear a knocking sound. See, it just dents. I'm actually gonna cream this up for just a second because it is a cold day. My butter needs a head start. Now I'm gonna get half a cup of granulated sugar, 100 grams, I'm gonna add that in. And while that mixes, I'm gonna measure out half a cup of brown sugar. For the brown sugar, just really pack it in. We want 110 grams if you're measuring it with a scale. Now, because we packed it in, I don't want to throw like this hockey puck of sugar in here. I'm just going to break it apart with my fingers. And while I'm at it, why not scrape the bowl down just once? For any recipe you make, you want everything to be homogenous in your batter. So there's no like lump of like just butter because that would just melt into a pool. And while butter is delicious, it can't bake up. <laughs> so you want everything to be nice and homogenous, which is why we mix things up and scrape the bowl down. Okay, now we're gonna go to medium high and mix this for three to four minutes until it's really light and fluffy. Now we're gonna crack one egg in here. It should be room temperature. I'm gonna drizzle in two teaspoons of a nice vanilla. That's 10 ml. Ooh, okay, my second to last scrape down. This is our train wreck. So we do wanna scrape it down and make sure everything mixes together well. And you wanna get things nice and smooth before you add the flour in because once you add the flour in, you're mixing until just combined. If you overmix that, you'll get like a tough, dense, not tender situation. That's what you want. See, it's the same throughout. Okay, there's a couple little things you can do as a baker like measuring things out correctly, not overmixing your batter, using room temperature ingredients, that will make all the difference. It'll take everything from being like, ah, it's sure it tastes good, to oh my gosh, this is delicious. All right, now we're gonna add the dry mixture in, and here we will mix until almost combined. I'm also gonna measure out three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, but you could use any chocolate chips that you love. And yes, you can add nuts to this. Add those in there. This was almost combined. Now we're just going to distribute the chocolate chips. All right, it's really just like 30 seconds of mixing. Take a look in the bowl and you should see evenly distributed chocolate chips throughout, no big chunks of chocolateless cookie dough. 
grab that prepared skillet. Now we're going to press our cookie dough right into here. Don't worry if it looks crazy like this. That's how it should look. This is where it's best to use your hands, the clean hands. Press your cookie dough into an even layer. I like to make sure it's not too thin, not too thick with like lumps and humps. This looks nice. It would look even better with about two tablespoons of chocolate chips. So, grab a handful and just sprinkle over the top. This goes into the oven 350 for 22 to 25 minutes or until the edge is browned and the center can have a skewer coming out clean. Then it's time for a finishing touch. <laughs> out of the oven. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. You're gonna sprinkle on, if desired, just a little bit of flaked sea salt, adds some extra little dimension there. What skillet cookie would be complete without scoops of ice cream on top, melting and just dissolving into that gooey, ooey chocolate chip cookie? Break out some spoons and enjoy. That is like molten cookie magic topped with ice cream. There couldn't be anything better. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my cookie playlist.